Yes. It's pretty much embedded, right? Because you need a processor. Mm -hmm. So traditionally, you always require a, a MCU mm -hmm. or DSP, DSP, right? So now, because the processing requirement is higher, mm -hmm. you need to process a lot of videos mm -hmm. and audio signals. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to decide, if, for example, you have a lot of sensors in the mm -hmm. car, you need to decide, make decision on the mm -hmm. brake mm -hmm. and the steering mm -hmm. and all those stuff. Mm -hmm. So the um, microcontroller approach is not very effective now, mm -hmm. or you need many microcontrollers. Yeah. So you, so people are turning to FPGA. Mm -hmm. uh, not only that FPGA have DSP and processing capability, mm -hmm. but also okay. because FPGA is programmable. Mm -hmm. So they can make changes very late mm -hmm. into the design mm -hmm. cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, in actually one of the um, uh, European car, right, mm -hmm. like uh, Mercedes-Benz, mm -hmm. uh, they have as much as 18 FPGA, mm -hmm. silence FPGA, mm -hmm. in one car. Mm -hmm. So it's a very uh, good example of uh, uh, increasing use of uh, FPGA. Mm -hmm. But now it's mostly in high-end car. Mm -hmm. But even for Hyundai, they are uh, also looking at using FPGA for some mid-range uh, application as mm -hmm. well. So it's going to be more and more common. It is uh, one of our strong hole, actually. I would say strong. We, our product, uh, our automotive product, is very strong. Mm -hmm. We have what we call the XA product line, mm -hmm. Silence Automotive mm -hmm. XA, mm -hmm. uh, which means that all our FPGA mm -hmm. are qualified mm -hmm. for the automotive standard. Mm -hmm. I think it's exceeding. I, I forgot the, the name of the standard. I think it's called the uh, the AEQ100 or something like that. I can double check. Don't call me on that yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot the name of the automotive standard, but mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, there's an automotive standard. I think mm -hmm. that Silings is uh, surpassing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, we do have a pretty uh, significant portion of the business. Mm -hmm. It's a double digit, I think, mm -hmm. uh, 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 percentage mm -hmm. uh, in our revenue. But our majority of the revenue, I think like 45% mm -hmm. uh, is still communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then the next big section is ISM. Mm -hmm. I think it's coming up. It's, yeah. it's especially in the past, most of these automotive activities in Europe mm -hmm. or North, yeah, America North America because their design center yes. is over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And nowadays we see that um, they they start moving. For example, like Delphi, mm -hmm. um, you know, which is a big U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, company, company, right? Yeah. They start m re recruiting, hiring a lot of people in China. Mm -hmm. So we can see that they are moving some of the design to, mm -hmm. to China. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is uh, the trend, right? Because China is already the biggest market for automobile mm -hmm. in the world, mm -hmm. right? They already passed uh, America. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the future, I think they will have more design over here. Mm -hmm. And also, I think the uh, very successful uh, Korean uh, car manufacturer, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Daewoo, Hyundai, oh, yeah. right? Kia, yeah. you know, these companies actually are also increasing their electronic contents in the car. Um, FPGA already have a um, uh, crossover with Embedded many years ago, right? Uh, if you look at uh, uh, our existing FPGA today, we already have um, 8-bit MCU, we call it Pickle Blaze, mm -hmm. which is a Silence mm -hmm. proprietary mm -hmm. uh, MCU. Uh, and then we have the 32-bit version of that. It's called Microblaze, M-I-C-R-O-B-L-A-Z-E. Uh, Microblaze uh, has been very, as a soft core, has been used uh, uh, pretty common in, in our uh, customers. And Xilinx also provided uh, a set of tools mm -hmm. called Embedded Design Kit, mm -hmm. EDK, which is uh, 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 provide a one tool environment for embedded designer. Mm -hmm. So when they purchase our software tool, if they selected embedded design mm -hmm. option, mm -hmm. so the designer will get every tool from mm -hmm. debugger to mm -hmm. uh, all the uh, uh, simulation tool, mm -hmm. uh, design environment, simulate everything yeah. uh, 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 into the environment. So embedded is not new to, to FPGA. Mm, yeah. uh, also in the high-end side, um, Silings have uh, Power PC mm -hmm. in the in, in in our Vertex family for for two generation mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. uh, so we have seen uh, embedded has been uh, a very important part mm -hmm. of our FPGA mm -hmm. but moving forward um, I think 
early this year in April, Silex has announced a new and better strategy, which is what we call the uh, ex extensible processing platform. Uh, extensible processing, processing platform, platform, EPP, right? So these platform actually will include um, two ARM Cortex A9 core plus all the peripherals, right? In the past, we do not have the peripherals, but now we will have, you know, all the USB, the 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 you know the PCIe, the the I square C, the UR, mm -hmm. you know, all the peripherals also standard mm -hmm. uh, in the FPGA, mm -hmm. and it's a very powerful uh, embedded system because the ARM core A9 is a very okay. mid to high end core, right? It can run at 800 megahertz, mm -hmm. so we have two in every single device. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, the combined ARM and other peripherals on a yes. package level or die? No, single, single die. Silicon it's level. a single die, monolithic die. Okay. And uh, the, the ARM and the peripherals is hard core. Mm -hmm. And then the FPGA is a soft. soft. The advantage of that is um, you can still allow you know, the FPGA to allow you to expand beyond a processor can provide. Mm -hmm. That's why we call it extensible processor, uh, processor mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a major difference between this and what's in the past, because in the past we also have processor core and FPGA fabric, right? Mm -hmm. But what are the major difference? Mm -hmm. It's because in the past it's FPGA centric, okay. which means in the FPGA, uh, in the past you have to boot up Mm -hmm. the FPGA first mm -hmm. before you can use the microprocessor. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Now, in the new EPP uh, solutions, mm -hmm. is uh, processor-centric. In other words, even though the FPGA is not power up, you can still use the processor standalone. You can use it like a standalone processor. It has its own IOs, it has its own interface. Uh, the FPGA in the EPP is only a slave. The ARM is the master. Mm. So the ARM will control everything, including the FPGA. Mm. But versus in the past, I think some of our competitors also have uh, FPGA plus uh, ARM product. But the problem with that is the FPGA is the master, the ARM is the slave. So, which is opposite to most of the embedded design environment. So, the from the end user's point of view, what does what does the kind of reverse law of the FPGA and microprocess mm. make a difference? Oh, big difference! Big difference. First of all, if you have uh, an ARM on your PCB and an FPGA next to it, you need a lot of connection between the ARM and yeah, the FPGA. Yeah. Mm which means you use a lot of IOs. Mm -hmm. There's two re uh, uh, reasons uh, to, to put it in one chip. Mm -hmm. One is you reduce the number of IO, oh. so that you can use those IO for other mm -hmm. uh, user applications. Application. Second is the latency. The latency between the IO uh, of the FPGA and the IO of the ARM is very high. But if it's in one die, it's on chip, this, the latency is very, very, very mm -hmm. short. The high speed is high, very high speed. You can do a lot of things, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, the FPGA can be used as a hardware accelerator for the ARM, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the beauty of it. And 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 I forgot to mention that the the, the chip also have like a memory hard hard memory controller, so you don't need to use FPGA to build those uh, hardware mm -hmm. uh, controller mm -hmm. memory controller mm -hmm. anymore. Uh, the other beauty of that is because FPGA also have DSP blocks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. This is the basically the nature of mm -hmm. the FPGA. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, you can look at the system, uh, one chip, mm -hmm. you can have ARM, mm -hmm. you have FPGA general logic, mm -hmm. and you can use also have FDSP. Mm -hmm. So it's all three in one device. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The DSP will create a tremendous processing power. Mm -hmm. Example like uh, matrix multiplication, mm -hmm. uh, matrix inversion, mm -hmm. or video processing. Mm -hmm. 
those are very, very powerful features, which, for example, a traditional ARM core does not offer that. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it's almost like you're putting a TI, DSP, and an FPGA, and an ARM all in one chip. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. So, and it's programmable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So I think that's, that's what we see that, uh, to your question, mm -hmm. uh, because of this new breed of the product, we think we can allow Xilinx to go into uh, embedded market to the area that we've never been before. Mm -hmm. um, either is automotive, mm -hmm. right, or is digital camera mm -hmm. like consumer or uh, mm -hmm. uh, LCD display. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go into communication like wireless, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about uh, femtocell, enterprise femtocell. Mm -hmm. We're talking about base brand. Mm -hmm. um, so communication, they also need ARM core to do some monitoring functions, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So now it's all in one chip. Mm -hmm. We can also go into like audio video broadcast, mm -hmm. right? Which you, you, you need a, a, a processor as well. Mm -hmm. You can also go into some uh, you know, high-end industrial mm -hmm. surveillance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, or medical imaging. Mm -hmm. So the application is uh, definitely uh, uh, very, you know, promising. Mm -hmm. For for, mm -hmm. for our product like that. Mm -hmm. So now we have not announced the name of the family. Mm -hmm. we, we just announced the platform. Mm -hmm. So our next step, we're going to announce the family next year. A specific. Yes, uh, specific like devices, devices and yeah. other, you know, what are the, what's mm -hmm. the capability. Yeah. So that is our, uh, the, the e, e, EPP. EPP is your, uh, the, the uniform platform. Yes. And based on that platform, you can develop. Yeah, and many type of products. Many very, very specific uh, yes. application product. Yes, and this is going to be based on our Series 7 mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. right, which is 28 nanometer mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. technology. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you will have high-end power and low-end power. Mm -hmm. yeah, it will be a full you know, family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, okay. Very good point, DJ. Um, yeah. Uh, the traditional embedded system, we can look at the, the mainstream, I would say, I would call it mainstream embedded uh, system. We are all focusing on the 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, and 32-bit uh, microcontroller area. Uh, those areas um, could be also our target, but uh, the Cortex-A9 may be too powerful for those markets. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, ARM9 mm -hmm. is enough, mm -hmm. right? So right now, um, Silings choose Cortex A9. The reason is we want to serve the segment who require significant processing power, or which also give uh, a, a pretty good um, leverage to our current FPGA technology. For the traditional very low end uh, embedded environment, um, we have to look at you know what what will be the best value to to this market, right? For example, the the requirement will be very different. Uh, they do not need a very high power, powerful ARM core. Second is they probably need a very low uh, standby power, right? And they need a very cheap, right? maybe in the sub five dollar range, mm -hmm. right? So those areas we right now we 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 do not have a product at this moment. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody. Yeah. Uh, have a very compelling product. I mean, mm -hmm. some company they do have a product that they said they will go into this market, but still, you do not see many mm -hmm. of them are being used mm -hmm. uh, in the actual. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason for that, mm -hmm. right? So if if the product is so good, then everybody will be using it, mm -hmm. right? So which means I think the power consumption is still one of the biggest issue mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we need to solve. Mm -hmm. For 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 uh, a market like this, mm -hmm. so like handheld or set top box, or you know gateway, those those areas. I think we we know it's very high volume, mm -hmm. uh, but however, those areas first of all is very competitive, mm -hmm. cost is very low, margin very low, mm -hmm. and also there are a lot of ASSP mm -hmm. available, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 but if there's an area that we think there's, a, for example, um, uh, is software defined or is flexible, then we think it will be a good value for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, the industry is seeing another uh, big trend in. Uh, if you look at the, you look at the market, uh, you can see lots of OS now uh, spin up. 
mm. uh, Linux space or the last of all is now now are the coming out of the the laboratory. Mm. So what some that that that's suggesting some big opportunity for and you compatible landscape for a core process process mm. core develops yes. uh, mixed lab trying to mips are uh, trying to find a mm. new area mm. because they they, they they the Linux is available. Mm. So uh, really that, that that's another uh, big uh, the sea of change in this industry. Mm. So what uh, the lots of OS are the available in the market and lots of uh, the MIPS is now trying to enter in core process market for mobile phone. Mm. MIPS used to be uh, just in a setup box like uh, mm -hmm. and, but mm -hmm. They kind and of also uh, yeah, yeah yeah they they kind of some uh, you see of change it it doesn't mean uh, does it mean some uh, another char opportunity for FPGA areas? Yeah, um, I think the cell phone space um, people definitely because of iPhone and iPad right uh, people see the potential in the, in those market. Uh, but right now, those market actually are served uh, pretty well uh, with uh, ASSP and DSP, um, and people are looking for more information, uh, um, a more feature to be integrated into the phone. So, which means the, the the performance requirement is very high. But yet, the requirement on the power is also increasing too. Mm -hmm. So, um, I wouldn't comment on on MIPS, but I think. I would say a lot of the processor company would definitely would try to go into this market, but it's going to be a, a quite challenging and mm -hmm. competitive market. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it, what Xilinx's uh, goal right now is we, we, we try to go after those market which is underserved today. Underserved, which, mean, which means which is not served very well with ASSP mm -hmm. because they have the drawback, they don't have uh, flexibility. Mm -hmm. It's not served very well with DSP because mm -hmm. maybe its processing power is not high enough. Mm -hmm. uh, in those areas, I think will be a, a good chance mm -hmm. for signings mm -hmm. to, to go in. Mm -hmm. And then use that as a, as a foothold. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can expand into uh, the other areas. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, if you look at uh, consumer electronics, uh, even though predominantly FPGA is not found on handheld devices today, right? maybe CPLD, but not, not FPGA. But on LCD or plasma display, uh, FPGA has been very common. Right? FPGA uh, have been supporting most of these you know, 3D mm -hmm. movement in the LCD display, mm -hmm. and also as a timing controller, as a bridge of different um, interface, as a pro even as a processing engine uh, in the LCD display. So, we have customer that um, is using Silent FPGA in display today that we have been shipping um, millions, millions of units. We're mm -hmm. talking about six to seven million units a mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. This kind of quantity. 60. Yeah, One, six. six. No, six. Six 60. or seven. Six or seven. Yeah. So it's not a very high volume mm -hmm. if you compare to the cell phone, mm -hmm. but it's very high volume for FPGA already. FPGA. Yes. Yeah. Very high volume for FPGA. So, um, so that that represents a very good opportunity for for Xilinx, I think uh, in the embedded uh, uh, area. Right? People want you know two D to three D conversion. They want uh, frame rate conversion. They want uh, uh, you know uh, picture video enhancement. Mm -hmm. Right. So all these features you, you require a lot of uh, processing power. Challenge time. <laughs> well, I think it's yeah, also a very good time. Yeah, good time. yeah very good time. time. Yeah, because right now, uh, as you see that um, uh, many analyst company are expecting FPGA is supposed to be a, a significant growth uh, in the next few years, uh, higher growth than uh, the, the other semiconductor segments. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I I don't remember the actual number, but I think it's outgrow, mm, outgrow the the, the, the areas. other areas. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so we 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 want to take the opportunity mm -hmm. uh, of this is what we call a programmable imperative, mm -hmm. right? It's unstoppable. This basically the requirement from the market. Mm -hmm.
the requirement from the customer. They want to do more with less. <laughs> Everybody want to do more with less, right? And you want to have more powerful uh, product, but less power mm -hmm. and cheaper, right? Mm -hmm. So these requirements and also differentiation. People, you know, they, won't, they don't want cookie cutter solutions, right? Maybe in very low end, uh, white brand cell phone, they want uh, a turnkey solution. But most of the uh, uh, customer today, they want differentiation. Mm -hmm. So FPJ will allow them to differentiate and go to market faster. So FPJ is just, just the, the, the key factor for differentiation? Yes. Definitely, definitely, right? In fact, the reason that we, we are very successful in communication, because in communication space, uh, they need flexibility, time to market, but they also need a lot of differentiation. Um, so, FPJ will allow them to develop their proprietary IP on the device. Uh, so, this is a, a very good value of, mm. of FPJ. There, there are a few technology changes, as you mentioned earlier, right? One is the limitation of the Moore's law, right? Moore's law said every 18 months, your density is doubled. Uh, but your customer, our customer, were telling us that that's not enough. I want bigger parts. Um, I'll give you an example. I think uh, in our uh, 65 mm -hmm. nanometer technology, mm -hmm. Uh, one of the product line is we call Vertex 5. Mm -hmm. The biggest Vertex 5 we have has 300, uh, I mean, uh, 330,000 logic cell mm -hmm. element. Okay? 300,000 logic cell element. Uh, if you look at our 28 nanometer technology, yeah. we call it Vertex 7, mm -hmm. which is two generations later. Okay, mm -hmm. 330,000 is a low end in the density. Mm -hmm. Our biggest device is 2 million mm -hmm. logic cell. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So the 40 nanometer, which is in between, mm -hmm. our biggest element is 760,000 logic cell, right? So you can see that from 65 to 40, mm -hmm. it grows from 330, Mm -hmm. Thousand mm -hmm. to seven sixty. Seven sixty. Yeah. It's about mm -hmm. double, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But from seven sixty mm -hmm. in forty nanometer mm -hmm. to twenty eight nanometer is more than double, yeah, right? Quantum jump is <laughs> is more than two x. Oh. It's basically uh, 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 more than two x mm -hmm. kind of jump. So, what is our challenge? Our challenge is customer is pushing us to have a bigger device. But more slow said you can only double within 18 months. So what should we do? So we technologically, we basically develop this, what we call the silicon uh, stack, silicon interconnect mm -hmm. SSI technology. Mm -hmm. right? uh, uh, in fact, I have an opportunity to met with Daniel in Seoul mm -hmm. two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, right? We talk about this technology. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fabulous technology. It's basically having the stacking technology will allow you to put smaller die together to make it a big die. It's not a monolithic solution, but it will give you an uh, equivalent. Like, yeah, it looks right. right. So from the user point of view, they feel it is a big die. Mm -hmm. However, from two silings, we solve two technical challenges. One is we break the mouse law. Mm -hmm. right? In fact, we were joking the other day, we would say, Xilinx break the law. Mm. We broke the law, mm. right? But it's not the not the <laughs> legal law, but we broke the most law. Mm. Secondly, is we um, it will give give us a better cost structure and yield, mm. because we all know that you know, in order to yield a bigger die, it takes longer time mm -hmm. and it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. That's why the big die always come out the last in our, our family world out. Mm -hmm. But this time, the big FPJ is composed of four different die. Mm -hmm. And the die is much smaller, mm -hmm. which means what? Which means we can yield the die sooner. Mm -hmm. 
and deliver the product faster mm -hmm. to our customer. Mm -hmm. And also the yield is better mm -hmm. and give us a better cost structure, yeah. which means the customer will have a better better cost on, on a bigger FPGA. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So those are the uh, innovation. I think the Xilinx will continue to invest uh, to, 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 to tackle the technical challenge. Uh, the second uh, challenge is power, right? Uh, power is, uh, as you know, right, uh, very important feature uh, uh, requirement from customers, from the government, from the customers, from everybody, from your supply chain. Everybody want low power, but how? How do you make it low power? Um, you involve many, many things. For example, the process technology will help you to reduce static power. Mm -hmm. But dynamic power, you require architectural mm -hmm. innovation. Mm -hmm. So silings we have invested into many, many things. For example, like a gated clock, mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, parcel reconfiguration, we have uh, uh, you know, sp special design IOs mm -hmm. that save power. <clears throat> you know, we have different uh, transistor, mm -hmm. um, threshold voltage mm -hmm. mix, Right to to uh, optimize on mm -hmm. power, we have all sorts of things. So these actually will help reduce the dynamic power, uh, and then we have software tool to you to, to to do power optimization. Um, so all these actually helping our new family mm -hmm. to improve power mm -hmm. by more than two mm -hmm. x. Mm -hmm. So every family we. We look at from the 40 nanometer to 20 nanometer, mm -hmm. we reduce the power by mm -hmm. more than 50%, mm -hmm. this, which is very, very significant. Right. Um, but if you ask me whether we can continue to do that mm -hmm. for every process, no, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. It's a very big challenge. Mm -hmm. right. um, so, I guess the other challenge is customer want productivity mm -hmm. improve too, mm -hmm. right? The, we, we talk about performance, we talk about power, but productivity at the same time, the customer said, oh, you give me a big FPGA, good. You give me very good, you know, um, uh, power, which is good. But I want to do the design in half the time, which means they want us to improve the software runtime, mm -hmm. They want us to improve the solution delivery time, IP delivery time. Mm -hmm. They want to migrate their IP from older technology to new technology faster. Mm -hmm. So how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Well, definitely the package innovation is one thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, package, but also we're looking at how do we can unify the architecture. For our low-end and high-end device, mm -hmm. we, if we can have one architecture mm -hmm. which allow customer to migrate from a smaller device to a bigger device faster, mm -hmm. right? Because it's the same architecture. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, they can do a cost reduction from a high-end device to a smaller device. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at our competition, mm -hmm. they have different architecture. Mm -hmm. Mid-end, low-end, high-end, three different architecture. Mm -hmm. But in our case, in 28 nanometer, we will unify the architecture. We will make sure that customer can migrate IP very fast. Mm -hmm. They can even migrate from 65 or 40 technology into 28 technology mm -hmm. faster because it's using using the same architecture. Mm -hmm. So this will means improve productivity for our customers. Mm -hmm. And we're also looking at how do we build uh, what we call the targeted design platform, TDP, mm -hmm. which means we provide customer not only boards mm -hmm. and reference design, but we package everything together in one open box experience. Mm -hmm. You open the box, you plug in the power, everything works. Mm -hmm. We built this, what we call the TDP for specific market, mm -hmm. wireless, medical, consumer, industrial. We have specific solutions for different market. And what the customer will get is they will get the development board, they will get a lot of dollar card. The dollar card will contain different interface for different applications. It will have the software, mm -hmm. You even have the IP already loaded on the VPGA. Mm -hmm. Have a menu. Everything is just plug and play. So Xilinx, we are the first FPGA company to, to, to do that. Mm -hmm. and we, we call it uh, productivity improvement for our, our mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. 
so that they don't have to de develop, you know, for example, like memory controller, mm -hmm. you know, all these standard things again. Mm -hmm. Everything is already in the FPGA, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So silence is really changing the concept mm -hmm. uh, of uh, usability. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we, we hope we can uh, help improve the design productivity of our customers. Mm -hmm. right? But these are, are, are quite challenging to do. Mm -hmm. it's, it sounds simple, but it's not. For example, all the uh, boards that Xilinx provide can work with mm -hmm. other company boards mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. For example, you have a TI board, you have an analog devices mm -hmm. board, you have a Freescale board. Mm -hmm. They can connect together seamlessly with our board mm -hmm. because why we're using a standard interface. We call it a PGA mezzanine car, FMC, mm -hmm. which is an industry standard. Mm -hmm. So all these solutions, we can, we can put an FNet or Makers board mm -hmm. together too. We can, you know, connect them together and make it a, a complete solution. Mm -hmm. So, um, but obviously those are the result of uh, uh, customer requirement and, and, and market challenge. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, uh, as, as DJ said, the um, technology concept is not brand new, right? We basically are the first one who apply this in the, in the FPGA. Uh, <clears throat> the difference this time is, uh, well, first of all, um, FPGA actually is a very high performance uh, device, right? We're talking about the chip is running at 800 megahertz. And we have a lot of high-speed IOs, 30s, mm -hmm. and, and, and PLLs on, on the device. So um, we need to ensure, first of all, the latency between different slides is very short, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So this is very key, the latency. The <coughs> second, second challenge is we need to ensure the it's very reliable, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So that, that's why they, we use the concept of uh, the silicon interposer. Mm -hmm. In fact, TSMC is the one who developed this silicon interposer. Yes. And with this silicon interposer, <coughs> first of all, the silicon interposer does not have any transistor in it. Mm. Okay, so it's a passive. Yes. It's a passive. <coughs> so because it does not have any transistor, uh, it's very easy to manufacture. And it's also based on a 65 nanometer mm -hmm. technology. It's a very mature technology. Mm -hmm. So the U is very high. Mm -hmm. But the difference is, is it has a lot of wires in the interposer. So we can connect the slides together, mm -hmm. right? And then it also contain what we call the SU Silicon Via, TSV mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. that allow you to connect this die to the substrate, mm -hmm. to the package substrate. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the challenge is really how to increase the reliability of those TSV mm -hmm. and then also to fill those TSV with conducting material. Okay. And the, 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 the techniques to do that is patterned by TSMC. It's, mm -hmm. it's, not, um, it's not easy to do yes. because you, you, you cannot just, just dump your conducting material in. You, you need to consider reliability, you need to consider uh, because it's, it's etched. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. TSV is a hole that's etched. It's mm -hmm. not laser drill. Mm -hmm. It's etched. So you make sure it's, it's uniform, you make sure it doesn't, you know, short circuit it, right, your devices. Uh, the other uh, technology, actually, uh, is on the micro bumps. So the micro bumps are the bumps that connecting the FPGA die to this interposer, okay? And the interposer will have the regular C4 bump connected to the uh, the package substrate, substrate, right? Mm -hmm. So on the micro bomb, uh, we need to make sure that is uh, uh, you have all the connections and also can we uh, we we uh, what do you call that uh, uh, sustain to the stress, right? So the good thing about it is the interposer is the same material as the die, even though it's different technology but it's the same silicon material, silicon right? Silicon. So it will expand and contract at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that's why the, the stress on this microbomb is kept to the minimum. Mm -hmm. But we still have to ensure that this microbomb mm -hmm. does not fall out mm -hmm. or does not, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> during it, the, uh, the contraction or expansion, mm -hmm. it doesn't fall out, right? Mm -hmm. So the reliability 
of this micro bomb mm -hmm. is a technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the Su Silicon VR, I also mentioned that, right? Uh, 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 make sure that it's, uh, uh, the edge process, everything is, is, is good. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the interposer, this one is relatively easier, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But we still have to make sure that it works well when you're putting everything together, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, and then we also put these four FPGA mm -hmm. dies side by side, mm -hmm. and we don't stack them. Mm -hmm. The reason is because FPGA, uh, because it's very uh, high frequency operation, so the power consumption power could be high. high. Um, so if you put it on top of each, each other, the FPGA die at the bottom, the heat cannot go anywhere. It can only go sideways. So by doing that, we can re re remove the, the, the issue. The, the other thing is, if you stack the die, you need to have a new design flow. Why? Because your signal may go horizontally, your signal may go vertically. And there's no such 3D tool available in the market. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if you put it on sideways, mm -hmm. The signal still go from this die, going down to the interposer, up on this die, and going down and up and going down. Mm -hmm. So it's still horizontal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which means our software tool, mm -hmm. design flow, mm -hmm. we don't need to change. Mm -hmm. We don't need to change. Mm -hmm. So that was the, one of the innovation too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's stacking, but it's not stacking different not FPGA stacking. die, but stacking the die with the interposer. Interposer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's 3D in that sense. Mm -hmm. So overall, these are the four main technology. Uh, and then uh, this is definitely the the result of uh, you know multiple vendor that basically um, helping to make this SSI technology a reality, mm -hmm. right? So Xilinx, we basically designed the FPGA, we designed the interposer, mm -hmm. and we designed the package, mm -hmm. but we do not manufacture them. Mm -hmm. So we let TSMC manufacture the FPGA and the interposer and the TSV technology. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the EBITDAN, uh, they will provide the package substrate, and MCOR will put all these things together and also provide the micro bomb. Mm -hmm. So the micro bomb technology belongs to MCOR. MCOR. Yes. Mm -hmm. So all these company work together, we provide the final product. Mm -hmm. Great, great. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I hope I, I have explained the yeah. detail enough. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, this is basically what I just mentioned on the um, uh, <coughs> the advantage of this, right? So <coughs> traditionally, you have multi-chip. So not only that your trace has to go on the PCB trace, it, it's the latency is longer, okay. and also you consume a lot of IOs. Mm -hmm. You do not have that many IOs. I think the biggest FPGA device today is only have 1,300 IO. Mm -hmm. But in our FPGA, we have tens of thousands of connections. And the latency is only one nanosecond mm -hmm. from die to die. Mm -hmm. So it's very, very short, mm -hmm. very high performance. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and uh, this actually is the visualized how we put the four slides together. And then we have the interposer. You have all these connections between the die. And then you just stack it over it. So that's how we. Make so you can get uh, good performance and high speed. Yes. And uh, low power and at the same time, and, and then without changing our tool. Yeah, and uh, gain lots of gains in productivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 And then uh, did I mention this U curve? Right. This U curve is also quite important. Actually, we, I showed it to Daniel last time in Seoul. Right. Um, traditionally, the U is in proportional to the size. So the bigger the size is, the lower the yield, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So in order to yield a two million logic cell mm -hmm. die, mm -hmm. your yield will be all the way down here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so as the process improves, mm -hmm. your yield may improve, mm -hmm. but the curve will still look like this, mm -hmm. right? If your, your FPG size is very big, your yield is still low compared to the other size. Mm -hmm. But what we do is, instead of using a monolithic die, 
we make it four smaller die, mm -hmm. much smaller, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's only 25% uh, of a two million logic cell. So we make it smaller, which means the U is what? Improve that much, mm -hmm. right? So we, we can only U a die this small, the U of this smaller die is much higher than the U of this die.